Hello! My name is Orion Kate Maniala, your teacher in Practical Research 1. I will discuss to you the Module 7, which is Sampling Procedure and Sample. Please get your module so that you will be guided in our discussion. Let's start with the sampling in research. Sampling is a process through which a researcher selects a portion or segment from the population at the center of the researcher's study. The population is a group of persons or objects that possess some common characteristics that are of interest to the researcher and about which the researcher seeks to learn more. There are two groups of population the target population and the accessible population. The target population is composed of the entire group of people or objects to which the researcher wishes to generalize the findings of the study, while the accessible population is a portion of the population to which the researcher has reasonable access. For example, in a study about the common difficulties encountered by senior high school students in their first semester of the school year 2016-2017, the target population may be all the senior high school students in Metro Manila. However, the researcher may have access only to the students of a specific school. These students comprise the accessible population. Researchers commonly select samples for the study rather than the entire population due to constraints in budget, time, and manpower. A good sample should be representative of the population, such as the characteristics of the population. Especially those pertinent to the study are reflected in the sample with a fair amount of accuracy. The individual participants in the study are often referred to as subjects or respondents. The subjects are individuals or entities which serve as the focus of the study. Respondents are individuals or groups of people who actively serve as sources of information during data collection. The subjects of the study may also be its respondents, but there are also times that these are two groups of different individuals or entities. Subjects and respondents may also be referred to as elements, particularly if said elements are objects rather than people. Take for example, a study focused on the behavior of the students who belong to broken families. The students who belong to these families are the subjects of the study, which may be also the respondents the researcher seeks to interview directly. If the researcher interviews or surveys the classmates of these students, the students remain the subjects, and the classmates then become the respondents. A statistic is a number describing a property of sample, whereas a parameter is a number describing a property of a population. A statistic can be used to estimate the parameter in what is called a statistical inference. For example, a researcher examining all marriages in the Philippines in the year 2016 wants to find a particular parameter, the mean age of all of the men in those marriages, from a sample of 1,000 subjects, she obtains a sample of mean of 31 years. This figure is a statistic. Using this figure, she concludes that the mean age of Filipino men who married in 2016 is likely to be close to 31 as well. It is important for the researcher to use an acceptable sample size to ensure that their study will be accurate. Generally, the larger the sample, the more reliable the results of the study will be. Hence, it is advisable to have a sample large enough to yield reliable results, small enough to be manageable within the constraints of the study. Here are the factors to consider in determining the sample size. First, the homogeneity of the population. The higher the degree of homogeneity of the population, the smaller the sample size that can be utilized. Second, degree of precision desired by the researcher. The larger the sample size, the higher the precision or accuracy of the results will be. The third, types of sampling procedure. Probability sampling uses smaller sample sizes than non-probability sampling. 
Probability sampling is a type of sampling in which all the members of an entire population have a chance of being selected. This is also called scientific sampling. There are four different types of probability sampling. First, we have simple random sampling. It is a method of choosing samples in which all the members of population are given an equal chance of being selected. It is an unbiased way of selection. As samples are joined by chance, there are various ways of obtaining samples through simple random sampling. This include the roulette wheel, fishbowl method, and the use of a table of random numbers. The fishbowl method observes the following steps. The sampling frame, or a list of all the subjects or elements in the population in question, should be prepared. Second, all the names of the subjects or elements should be written down on a strip of paper, one name per strip of paper. Third, the strips of paper with the listed names are then placed in a bowl or container. Next is stratified random sampling. The population is first divided into different strata, and then the sampling follows. Age, gender, and educational qualifications are some possible criteria used to divide a population into strata. Example, a researcher will study the common effects of smoking on high school students. The researcher decides to select equal number of students from junior and senior levels. Cluster sampling is used in large-scale studies where the population is geographically spread out. Sampling procedures may be difficult and time-consuming. Example, a researcher wants to interview 100 teachers across the country. It will be difficult and expensive on their part to have respondents in 100 different cities and provinces. Cluster sampling is helpful for the researcher who randomly selects the regions for the first cluster and then selects the schools to be considered as second cluster and then the number of teachers. Systematic sampling is the type that involves the selection of every end of element of the list or population. Non-probability sampling is a process of selecting respondents in which not all members of an entire population are given a chance of being selected as samples. There are cases that certain segments of a population are given priority over others, such as when a researcher does not intend to generalize to a larger population. This is also called non-scientific sampling and is commonly used in qualitative research. There are different types of non-probability sampling. First, we have convenience sampling. It is also called accidental or incidental sampling. For example, a researcher intends to study the elementary students of a particular school and has determined the desired sample size. Due to the study's constraints, the elementary pupils who are present at the time of the researcher's visit to the school will be chosen as respondents. Quota sampling is somewhat similar to stratified sampling in that the population is divided into strata, and the researcher deliberately sets specific proportions in the sample, whether or not the resulting proportion is reflective of the total population. This is commonly done to ensure the inclusion of a particular segment of the population. For example, a researcher wants to survey the employees of the company regarding their thoughts on the company's new policies. The researcher intends to have representatives from all departments in his sample, but one department is so small that doing random sampling might result in that department not being represented. The researcher then sets a cut of respondents from that department to ensure their inclusion in the sample. Purposive sampling involves hand-picking subjects. Usually to suit very specific intention, this is also called judgmental sampling. For example, in the study about honor students, the researcher uses a list of honor students and chooses the necessary number of respondents to the exclusion of all other students. In selecting the sample of a study, 
the following elements must be properly discussed. The total population and its parameters, the sample and its statistics, the sampling method with references to support it, an explanation and discussion of the sampling method, an explanation of how the sampling was done, an enumeration of the qualifying criteria, and the profiles of the subjects or respondents. Here is the sample respondents and sampling procedure. Management by culture of Kapampangan school managers in selected universities and colleges by De La Cruz 2002. Two universities and six colleges in Pampanga were considered in the university. These schools include the Holy Angel University, University of the Assumption, AMA Computer College in Angeles City, Systems Plus Computer College, STI Computer College, Republic Central Colleges, Philippine State College of Aeronautics, and Pampanga Agricultural College. The main respondents in this study included the college deans, assistant college deans, and area chairpersons of the eight educational institutions. For in-depth probe, 10% of the college faculty of each university or college was chosen using the simple random fishbowl technique. 